The Raspberry Pi 2 is speedy. I'm sure you've all heard that before, but I'm going to reiterate it here. Although the Foundation said in a podcast interview that they weren't going to be releasing a Pi 2 until 2017, link in the description, their hand was somewhat forced. With devices like the Odroid and Banana Pi coming out with similar price point but better performance, the Raspberry Pi was going to fall behind. Or perhaps the whole No Pi 2 until 2017 statement was simply a ruse and they had that Pi 2 up their sleeve the entire time. Who knows? All we know is that they did a very good job keeping this thing under wraps and that it's a huge improvement over the previous Pi models. I went over the specs a little in my previous video, which you can watch here, but I'm going to go over them again in this video and try to go a little bit more in depth. I'm going to first list the previous Pi Model B and B Plus specs, since that's what we'll be comparing the Pi 2 against, and then I'll list the Pi 2 specs. So first off, the SoC. This little chip is a combination of the CPU, GPU, and a RAM, and it's what provides the Pi with its brains. The previous Pi models featured a Broadcom BCM2835 system on chip, which had a single core ARMv11 low power CPU, which ran at a 700 MHz base clock. The GPU was a dual-core video core 4 multimedia coprocessor, which worked alongside the CPU and used the same RAM. And as for the RAM, the Model B and B Plus have 512MB of Samsung Mobile DRAM. Now that we have something to compare against, let's take a look at what the Pi 2 has to offer. The Pi 2 features the new Broadcom BCM2836 system on chip, which is composed of a 900MHz quad-core ARMv7 CPU, the same Broadcom video core 4 GPU, and double the RAM at 1GB. The RAM chip is an Alpida EDB8132B4PB-8D-F, an 8GB DDR2 RAM chip that has the same clock rate as the RAM in the original Raspberry Pi. Although the stock clock of the CPU wasn't a huge increase, about 1.28 times faster, the quad-core design is really what gives the Pi 2 CPU the edge over the previous Pi model CPUs. If the application you're using is multi-threaded or the code you're running has multi-threading coded in, you're going to see a huge improvement in performance. Now, you're probably thinking, enough rambling on and on preaching the glories of the Pi 2. Where are the numbers? Don't worry, that's up next. I wasn't the first to receive the Pi 2. A fellow Raspberry Pi enthusiast received one and did some very impressive benchmarking and a great write-up that I really can't compete with. If you're looking for raw performance numbers, then I suggest you go and read his post. I'll link it in the description. The method I used to get these numbers was fairly simple. Plug the Pi in and start the timer. As soon as I see the login prompt, stop the timer, that's the boot time. I recorded the boot time of the Pi 2 on both a Class 4 and Class 10 card, and then compared that to the boot time for the Pi 1 Model B on the same card. First off, we're going to compare the boot time for the Raspberry Pi 1 Model B and the Raspberry Pi 2 Model B on the same Danelec 4GB Class 4 microSD card. The Pi 1, obviously requiring a full-size SD card, use the micro SD card adapter. Both Pis are running the 2015-01-31 Raspbian release. The initial boot time to the Raspi config screen for the Pi 1 was 38.90 seconds. The initial boot time to the Raspi config screen on the Pi 2 was 21.52 seconds. In this case, the Pi 2 was about 1.8 times faster than the Pi 1. Nothing dramatic, but still definitely respectable. I set up the Pi to match my time zone and keyboard layout, expanded the file system, and then rebooted. Now, the first boot up after expanding the file system in Raspi config takes a little bit longer than a normal boot up because it actually has to complete the file system resizing and a few other tasks that have to be done for the first time. This is uh, one of the times where we see the Pi 2 pulling quite a bit of lead on the Pi 1. The Pi 1's time is snail-esque at 1 minute 8 seconds, while the Pi 2's beefier quad-core CPU makes its initial boot up time almost twice as fast at 35.36 seconds. I then took a sampling of 5 boot times and then averaged them. Again, the Pi 2 pulled out a fairly sizable margin of victory over the Pi 1, booting in an average of a mere 15.99 seconds, as opposed to the Pi 1's 30.11 seconds. As with the shutdown times, I use the exact same method, gather 5 shutdown times and average them. This is actually something that surprised me a little bit. The Pi 1 actually shut down faster, exact same SD card mind you, than the Pi 2 by about 7 seconds. The Pi 1 shutting down in 13.73 seconds and the Pi 2 at 20.25 seconds. 
What causes this, I'm not sure. My best guess would be that the class 4 card is bottlenecking the Pi's capabilities, however, that doesn't explain the Pi 2's slower shutdown times. Still think it'd be about the same. If anyone knows why this is, please feel free to leave a comment down below explaining this. Putting that strangeness aside and moving on to the Class 10 card, a SanDisk Ultra 16GB card, everything speeds up pretty much as you would expect. For the initial boot time to the Raspberry config screen, the Pi 1 booted in 36.94 seconds, while the Pi 2 booted in under half that at 14.59 seconds. Moving on to the initial boot time after setting up the Pi, the Pi 1 took almost exactly one minute to boot, while the Pi 2 booted in a blistering 27.12 seconds, more than double as fast. As for the average boot times, well, the Pi 1 has a respectable 30.28 second average boot time on the Class 10 card, while the Pi 2 pulls out the hat tricks of over twice as fast times, with a very impressive 14.92 second average time. There really isn't too much of a difference in the boot times between the Class 4 and Class 10 cards. However, the shutdowns are very much the opposite of that. The Pi 1 shuts down in an average 6.72 seconds, while the Pi 2 takes an average of 6.46 seconds. Nothing terribly exciting here, the Pi 2 pulls out a fourth victory in a row with a margin of 0.26 seconds. On the screen now, you should see a couple different clips of applications like LibreOffice Writer, LibreOffice Calc, Epiphany, Chromium, and Minecraft Pi Edition starting up. This video is focusing mainly on the times that the average user is going to notice, boot and shutdown times, application launch times, as opposed to raw figures, so that's what this is. I'm just going to start the application and time how long it takes the application to get to a usable state. Now, I actually gathered a few more comparison clips for booting into the desktop, but I didn't take the five samples and get averages or anything like that. Any times you see on the screen will be what I got while recording the screen.
And that wraps up the section on the boot times. Like I said, you can get a link to the text dump version of the times in this video in the description. If you do wish to use these times in a blog post or press release or any form of media, please leave a link back to this video. I'm going to be doing another video, hopefully soon, where I try out various pieces of software, Ubuntu Snappy Core, RMB7 version of Ubuntu 14.10, Android, as well as a few different desktop applications like GIMP, LibreOffice, Minecraft Pi Edition, to see if they'll run, and if so, how well on the Pi 2. And that about wraps everything up. Please leave a comment telling me what you thought of my review. This is the first time I've done a video review of anything, and I'm also new to producing content on YouTube, so I'm always looking for suggestions and feedback on my videos. If you really enjoyed the video, please do leave a like, and if you like what you've seen and want to see more, please make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been Avis Tech.